So right now, right now, all of you watching this broadcast have electricity. But some of your neighbors, however, remain in the dark. Not just your neighbors in rural New Jersey or out on the barrier islands, but also your neighbors right here on the island of Manhattan. For thousands of Manhattan residents, this is the 11th night of the blackout. The Wall Street Journal reports that 30% of the city's projects are without heat. At Knickerbocker Village on Monroe Street, eight buildings remain without power. There's over 20 feet of water in the boiler rooms. Some are estimating it will take up to three weeks, three weeks before the lights and heat return. Haven Plaza on Avenue C remains in a blackout. No power, no heat, no hot water, and no water at all for the upper 20 floors of the 26-story housing project. The New York City Housing Authority lacks enough workers, lacks enough engineers, lacks the pumps necessary to empty the basements, and in some cases, they even lack the gasoline to power the pumps. Con Edison workers have been waiting all week to get into these basements. But even when the basements of these buildings are eventually pumped dry, the equipment probably won't work. Unknown damage to the boilers, the transformers, the cables and the junction, bo junction boxes that supply electricity to the buildings could cause these blackouts to last even longer. Just as it was a surreal scene downtown last week with all the lights out, tonight on the Lower East Side, it remains surreal. With bars full of happy students and yuppies partying on one side of an avenue C, just across the street, elderly and disabled residents remain stranded in their cold, dark apartments for the 11th night in a row. This is an unprecedented crisis in New York City. Now, volunteers today continue to carry water, blankets, food, and life-saving medication up 12 flights or 20 flights or 26 flights of stairs just to keep these people alive. The Army Corps of Engineers came to the rescue of the subways and the tunnels. Why are they not pumping out the basements of these buildings where tens of thousands of people live? What is the point of declaring a state of emergency if thousands of people, families, disabled people, the elderly, what is the point if they are ignored, left to fend for themselves? Now, the Village Voice features featured the efforts of some of the Occupy movement in Brooklyn and Queens to bring supplies to some housing projects. Why the Occupy people? Because FEMA hasn't shown up. The Federal Emergency Management Authority can't manage to find the way to the poorer neighborhoods of New York City. Federal officials can't manage to take the subway to the people who need them most. So while the rest of the city and the mayor congratulate themselves on how they were able to survive the worst hurricane to hit the city in decades, perhaps they should look to the darkened buildings on the Lower East Side, Red Hook, the Rockaways. Perhaps they should ponder what it takes to climb 20 flights in a pitch black stairway, carrying water, food, blankets. Yes, for most of us, it was a couple of days adventure where we had to wait on long lines at Gristides and go somewhere else to charge our phones. But for thousands of our neighbors, this remains a cold, dark emergency for the 11th night with no end in sight. You're watching DVTV Live. My name is Richard Speziali. As I said, we're live on the 8th of November, 2012. We are taking your phone calls tonight at 212-757-1393. Uh, the mail out, the mass email we did today, that had the wrong phone number because we switched studios. So the call in number to, to us is 212-757-1393. 1393. We want to hear from you on the Lower East Side, especially, well, I don't think if you're in one of those buildings you're able to watch or able to call in. But I know many of you have volunteered and many of you are aware of your neighbor's plight in these buildings. And it's not only Manhattan, it's other parts of the city, as I said, in the Rockaways, in Red Hook, 11 nights. Imagine that, 11 nights without power. This has never, ever happened before in New York City. Never happened before. 11 nights. And it's not only without water, it, without, without power, it's without water, it's without heat, um, it's without the ability to flush your toilet. 
I mean, there are people hauling up buckets of water up 26 flights of stairs so some of these people can flush their toilet. Think about that. You were inconvenienced because you didn't get your email. You had to go somewhere else to charge your phone. But these people, they're fighting for their survival tonight. While FEMA eh, helps out parts of the other city, they pumped out the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, or they're pumping out the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel now. The Queens Midtown Tunnel is going to open tomorrow. At the same time, gas rationing starts tomorrow. Uh, odd and even. I guess tomorrow is an odd day. And you might not think that gasoline, if you're, you live in Manhattan, you might not think that gasoline is a big deal if you don't have a car. But it all has a ripple effect. For instance, just, just a small part of the puzzle, here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network last week, now it's, a, it's, it's not a secret, but a lot of the employees of Manhattan Neighborhood Network can't afford to live in Manhattan. They live in the outer boroughs. In order to staff this, this, this operation last week, Manhattan Neighborhood Network offered car service to those people so they could get in. The subways weren't working, needed to get to work. They offered them car service. But guess what? Some of the car service told us, some of the car services told us, we might not come because we can't get gasoline. Well, I spoke to a cab driver who's, who's on our staff right now. He has to go upstate somewhere to buy gasoline. Tomorrow, rationing starts. And the gasoline powers the pumps that pump out the basement. Gasoline powers the emergency vehicles. It's all part of a big puzzle. And this is in crisis tonight in New York City. So call us up. Let us know what you're thinking, what you're doing, if you're helping your neighbors, if you're aware of this. I mean, this got some, this did get some, uh, did get reported on the Wall Street Journal today uh, and also the New York Post. Um, I also heard something on 1010 Winds today about Haven Plaza downtown. However, this has not gotten as widespread coverage as parts of New Jersey, parts of Long Island, where, they, where, where, as I said last week, the major news outlets, the local news outlets, that's where their advertiser dollars are headed. That's where they emphasize. They never really emphasize the inner, inner city because their advertisers selling fancy cars and such don't care for the people in the inner city because they're not their clientele. So there's been very minimal coverage. A lot of people do not realize, do not realize. For, I spoke, just spoke to a former resident of the Lower East Side just a few moments ago. He didn't realize that Haven Plaza was without power for the 11th day and the 11th night. And for some of these buildings, well, they're projecting maybe a couple of weeks until they get their power back. Why? Well, as I said, Knickerbocker Plaza, 20 feet of water in their basement. It may be seawater, and when they drain that out, unknown. What happens? Are the transformers good? Are the junction boxes good? Are the boilers good? Highly doubtful if a boiler's been underwater. What do you think, Johnny Sands? If a boiler's been underwater for, for the past week, is that going to be easy to start up again? No. No, not at all. Not at all. So give us a call. Let us know. 212-757-1393. Call us up tonight here on the 8th of November, 2012, day 11 or night 11 of the great blackout of 2012. Most of the city has been restored, but you might not be aware that your neighbors downtown, thousands of them, are blacked out. Many of these people, as I said, they're stranded. They're unable to leave their apartment, can't get down the stairs. And if they do get down the stairs, think about it, pitch black stairways. The volunteers today carrying up buckets of water, supplies, blankets, food, up stairways over and over and over again. While FEMA is out in the outer boroughs, in parts of the outer boroughs, they're definitely in Jersey, definitely on Long Island, but where are they for the people in the inner city who need them very badly? 212-757-1393, we have our first call. Hello, caller. You are live on DVTV tonight. And that number is different than the one we emailed out. It's 757-1393. Hello. Hi, caller. You're live on DVTV. Hi. Um did you say something about uh, downtown Manhattan, about some of the people who don't have uh, 
heat and hot water or food? Yes, I did. Yes, we were talking okay. exclusively about that. I, yes. I believe I believe where you mentioned is where I was giving out sandwiches today. Um, I helped the local restaurant mm -hmm. um, make 300, 400 sandwiches mm -hmm. and soup, mm -hmm. and we brought it over. The people that were there didn't know it was there, so we had to go to the management office to let them know. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, there were there were some security, there were some policemen, mm -hmm. and uh, some volunteers from good old Lower East Side goals. Right. right. But just other the, than that, there was nobody doing anything. But the policemen were bringing um, many containers of water, but everybody had, in, in two of the buildings, they had to walk up the steps because right. the elevators weren't working. Right, and just, just a number of, I mean, you just said you made 400 sandwiches. So that indicates there's hundreds of people stranded in these buildings, correct? I would think so. Mm -hmm. I think most of the people are infirm or elderly or right. have some, some sort of problem where they're not going to get downstairs. They're not going to get, so they've been stuck in the dark, in the cold for 11 nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as I mentioned before, they need water just to flush their toilets. Well, Sanitary like conditions. Say, just in case anybody is listening to the program, or can FEMA mm -hmm. is supposedly giving out three hundred dollar food vouchers to anybody who was in the dark, who anybody who lost electricity at all. Right. Problem is, is that a lot of people don't know about it. Yeah. And those are the people who need it the most. And we're trying to tell people. We're trying to tell people right now. But again. People who are blacked out aren't getting this broadcast. And there's been very, very little mention on the radio um, of these. And really, the, the, they've, they've, they don't mention where they're giving out food, where it's available, that kind of thing. Very well, little you mention can on call, the Well, you can call FEMA at 800-621-3362. Give us that number again, please. Pardon? Give us that number again, please. 800 mm -hmm. 621-3362. 3362. And that's the Federal Emergency Management Association. So there's vouchers available for people who lost food. But again, if you're stuck, if you're elderly or you're disabled, you're stuck in an apartment, a $300 voucher isn't going to do you much good. No, and if anybody is interested in volunteering or doing anything, mm -hmm. I think the best thing for them to do is to actually go to that area mm -hmm. and find out from security or the ma find out where the management office is, right. where whatever building it is, whatever area it is, and mm -hmm. just ask what can be done, who's volunteering, et cetera, et cetera, because there doesn't seem to be any real organization about it. And that was one of the complaints from Knickerbocker Plaza, that I, that I read today in um, one of the articles in Knickerbocker Plaza, there's been no communication. In Haven Plaza, there's been no communication from the management. Uh, they don't put up notices that nobody knows what's going on. Well, there were handwritten notices mm -hmm. on a lot of the doors at Haven. Okay. But, I, I, you know, the people on the 26th floor, I doubt, unless they're kids, they're not going to come down to get them. Right. I have to do commend uh, the police, though. Mm -hmm. They were carrying big crates of water all the way up. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. That, that is encouraging. And again, the, the, the NYPD is filling in where FEMA has not appeared. I didn't see FEMA. That's all I can say is I didn't see FEMA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And, and, you, and you also mentioned good old Lower East Side, G-O-L-E-S. They're coordinating volunteer effort, relief efforts down there, correct? Yes, there are. And a few of the people were out of towners. Uh, a couple of people wow. were from Massachusetts. Wow. Somebody was from Rhode Island. That's impressive. They had to catch buses to go back. So we're importing people. And I think there's plenty of people in Manhattan that are New Yorkers that could actually be doing this work. More, more than able to do this. And as I mentioned before, I don't know if you heard me, but on one side of Avenue C, there's bars full of people, ha young people happily partying. On the other side of Avenue C, there's darkened buildings with people caught in them for 11 it's nights. It's really like two separate towns. Two separate cities, yeah. Uh -huh. A tale of two cities. Mm -hmm. What uh, you, you said you, you had met people from Massachusetts and other people. Um, 
T why did they come down from Massachusetts? Why did they come here? I don't. I don't know that they came here. I didn't. We we were busy. We didn't right. really have a lot of conversation. Mm -hmm. I think. I think what happened is they were here. Right. And they decided to volunteer. Mm -hmm. I think that's more than commendable. But the fact is, is that there are not a lot of New Yorkers that could come out and volunteer. Right. Right. And so I. I don't know how to rally people or be an activist for that because. You know, a lot of people do work, mm -hmm. and, and they have to go back to their jobs, and that's right. acceptable. Yeah. But there are people that are able-bodied that don't have anything to do at this time. And, right, right. They have volunteer. a lot of spare time on their hands. They're more than healthy. They're going to the gym to work out. Hey, instead of going to the gym, why don't you, instead of getting on that Stairmaster, try carrying some, try giving the police a break and carrying some water up to these people who cannot, cannot escape their apartments. Think about it. Here, this, this might rally a few people. Think about your mother. Think about your grandmother up there in that apartment. What if that was your grandmother well, up you there know, in that the apartment to, in need of food, in need of water? Go into the area, maybe with a buddy system, with mm -hmm. someone else, a partner of some sort, right. and just walk around and see what, the, what stores are closed. Mm -hmm. Take some numbers down, what needs to be done. Walk into a place and say, do you need anything? Is right. there any way I can help? That is one of the best ways to volunteer, Right. I think. Right. Just ask. Just ask. Yep. Because, again, FEMA, you have to scout who, it out. Who, who are play, paying taxes for, and we've seen enough of that time lapse already. Come back to me, please. Um, FEMA is not, uh, again, the NYPD is filling in where FEMA has not appeared. Occupy movement is out in the boroughs where FEMA has not it, it appeared. And uh, in this Village Voice article, of course, was reading about uh, people who are pretending to be FEMA workers. They knock on the doors. What happens when they open the door? Boom, they come in, bum rush the person, steal all their stuff. Same thing with some people who call themselves Con Ed workers. And these people, uh -huh. should, be, these people should be tarred and feathered and paraded through the streets for people and but that's another matter altogether but FEMA is not here I, I this is an emergency situation sorry <laughs> sorry I think tarred and feathered is a little extreme but well for pe at, hey for people sure. who get for people who are ripping off other people stealing their belongings stealing them blind yeah, uh, in an jail. emergency <laughs> taking advantage of a tragedy that is a that is a heinous yeah. crime that is a heinous crime it is it is. Yeah. I have to go. Okay. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for the work you, you did. Thank you for putting the word out. Okay. Yes. We are taking your phone calls at 212-757-1393. Now, there is a person who is trying to make a difference. There is a person who is concerned about our neighbors caught in these buildings, stuck in these buildings. Imagine, you're old. You can't go down the stairs. You can't even flush your toilet probably haven't had a, a, been able to bathe. You can't get your medication. I mean, this is a life and death situation. This is a true emergency. You may not see it happening. You may not be aware that there is an emergency going on because you didn't hear it in the news. They'd, they're, they're featuring Staten Island. They're featuring Long Island. They're featuring New Jersey. Yes, there are tragedies going on out there. But these are your neighbors here in Manhattan, right here, right now. These people are suffering, and there is no relief in sight. FEMA is not there for them. Uh, it's unknown when power will come back, because some of the basements are still flooded after 11 days, because FEMA is not there pumping out. Where is the Army Corps of Engineers who pumped out the, pumped out the Midtown Tunnel? That's opening tomorrow, but at the same time, many buildings downtown and in the Rockaways and Red Hook, other parts of the city, still flooded, still without power, still a big unknown when they're going to get power back. 212-757-1393, your thoughts on the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. Most of us have gotten over it. For most of us, it was a little adventure. We had to go somewhere to charge our phone, check our email. But for some of us in Manhattan, some of your neighbors the, the, and the most vulnerable, the most at-risk people, they are stuck in their apartments. It's cold. They have no running water. Again, if you're above the sixth floor, 
there's no electricity in your building, there's no water to be had. Where is the Army Corps of Engineers? Where is FEMA? Where is our tax dollars at work in this time of a crisis, in this time of a true emergency? The mayor, politicians, the news media, they're slapping themselves on the back. They're congratulating each other on a job well done. We survived the hurricane. We got over it. But for many New Yorkers, many Manhattanites, many of your neighbors tonight, they haven't gotten over it. And they don't know when they're going to get over it. They don't know when they're going to get medication, food, uh, hot water, cold water. And again, they can't even flush their own toilets. They can't even bathe. They can't even wash. They are stuck there. Imagine yourself in this situation. It's not a good situation. And it is, it is almost unthinkable that in the 21st century, modern day Manhattan, people are stuck like this. Give us a call, 212-757-1393. Two, 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 you call us to DVTV Live tonight. Yes, it is, the 12th, it is the 11th night going into the 12th day of the blackout for thousands and thousands of people downtown and, of course, out in Red Hook, the Rockaways, other parts of the city. The, the emergency response is wholly inadequate for many of these people. Hi, caller. You are live on DVTV tonight. Hello. Hi there. Hey, hey, Rich. I just want to say I love your show. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And I also wanted to ask you, do you think that the Republicans are really going to do something about this immigration thing? Uh, and, and, or do you, like, do you think that they're going to try to appeal to the Latino voters? What's going to happen with the Republican Party? What's going on? I would, I would like to think that they were all smacked down on, uh, on, t on Tuesday night. They had thought this, this election was in the bag. They had thought that the rest of America was sick of Obama. And, uh, and look at what happened with the election results. It was a very, very liberal victory in, mm -hmm. many, ca in many states, in many places. Um, this is where that's where the country is headed. That's where we are. Yeah. But yeah. what I want to know is I don't understand why they want to. I understand that you know the Latino voters they they come together, they vote, they go out, they mm -hmm. got you know they got the numbers and everything. But what about the African American voters? Don't nobody care about us? Yeah. Well, as um, I, I saw a program from these studios just the other day, Alton Maddox was on on the air, and he reminded everybody that. Black people used to vote Republican. In previous generations, mm -hmm. the black people, the Republican Party was the party of Lincoln. Yep. Uh, Latino voters for yeah. many, many years mm -hmm. were, were loyal Republicans. It doesn't happen anymore. No. But let me, let me just talk about for a minute the big change in this election because many Republicans had said, we need to take this country back. We need to take this country back. Who were they talking about? We, they were talking about non-urban white people. Yeah. Well, guess what, Republicans? That's getting to be a smaller and smaller percentage. It just bothers me when they say that, you know, uh, that minorities are not minorities anymore. You know, and- I don't know what that means. Meaning that, meaning that people of color are no longer the minority? Well, they are the minority, but they're moving out of that minority position. And in terms of Latinos, um, what is the year when when fifty percent of American citizens will be of Hispanic descent? Two thousand and fifteen. Two thousand fifteen. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, that's I mean, well before. I mean, what kills me is that these people, these American people, some of these people act like they didn't steal this land from the Mexicans. Oh, and the yeah. Native Americans. And the Native Mexicans. Americans. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, I think it's a big wake up call for many Republicans. I'm sure, I'm sure the T I hope the Tea Party is is a thing of the past and we never have to hear about I them. I doubt that. Ignorance is ignorance. Ignorance is ignorance, true. And some people will not. And even Michelle uh, Michelle Bachman did. Oh, God, I can't oh, even. Oh, gosh, right I've, now. Yeah. Where do they find these people? I didn't Where even know. Are they college educated? <laughs> I, I don't know, um, but as I said, this is this is this is where America is going. They saw it coming. They didn't like it. They tried to rally rally the forces of the old America, the white, the rural America that used to hold power. But increasingly, just as just as the last mayoral election in New York City was the very first time, the very first time that 
white people were not the majority of the voters. Mm. It was, there were more, more Latinos, more blacks combined voting. Well, they still didn't, still didn't elect Thompson, but that may be, I think that's Thompson. Rich, you got a great show, man. I can't wait to see you next week. Okay, thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. And thank you all for watching. I want to thank Drew Taylor, who did our lovely enough lights. I want to thank Medja Bed, who is on the switcher tonight. I'd like to thank Joy Stovall, who's on the phones and the teleprompter. I'd like to thank Johnny Sands, who's directing, even though he walked in a little late. He's our, he's our mechanical consultant and uh, aircraft consultant on this show. And I want to thank you for watching again. If you want to volunteer your time, first, first, first of all, go downtown. Talk to people. You might find you might find some people. You might find out where to volunteer. Also, G O L E S. Look them up. Google them. They'll tell you who needs help. Until next week, maybe from a new studio. This is Rich Speciali. Good night. Good news.